Welcome to This Old Camera. I'm your host, Azrael Knight, and today I'm going to show you a camera that was designed by the same guy who reinvented the Coke bottle. You're taking pictures. How nice, says she. I hope they turn out. They will, says he. How, says the boy, can a fellow miss with a model like you and a film like this? The young man's film is Ansco All Weather Pan. The only film so sure to get good pictures, it's guaranteed. Snapshots that delight you or a new roll of film free. The Ansco Flex 2 was a pseudo TLR and an updated model which now included two built-in filters. One for close-ups and one for darkening skies in black and whites. It was produced by the Ansco Company between 1953 and 1956 and was designed by Raymond Lowy in association with the Sears department stores. Even if you don't know the name Raymond Lowy, you definitely know his work. Some examples include the Studebaker Commander, the Shell and BP logos, the Pennsylvania Railroad locomotives, and of course the Coca-Cola bottles. Raymond Lowy could even make a pencil sharpener look beautiful. And actually he did. Ansco was well advertised on TV and print, and was even, I want to say endorsed, but that's probably not the right word, uh, by Hollywood actor Kirk Douglas in this advertisement in Life magazine. Lowy, Sears, and Ansco wanted an easy-to-use camera for the masses that was unique and separated themselves from Kodak. Ansco was a German company trying to make a name for themselves after World War II. Around this time they were producing about 2 million cameras per year. Not just the Ansco Flex, but a whole line of cameras. Color films, black and white films, cameras, or projectors. If it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. From here we'll go over some basics of its operation. Then I'll put it through some tests to make sure it's working. After that, I'll go out and shoot with it. And finally, I'll share some thoughts with you and tell you where to get one, how much it'll set you back, and if it's worth it. If you have a case, remove the flash gun first by unscrewing counterclockwise. Then unscrew the cover at the tripod socket. And unsnap the support strap in the front. Slide the front cover enough to reveal this red button at the top back. Pushing it will open the back. The Ansco Flex takes 620 size spools. 120 spools are too thick to fit. To solve this problem, you can re-spool your film in the darkroom or use sandpaper to thin out the spool ends. I recommend sandpaper because modifying your own spools is cheaper than buying 620 spools and quicker than re-spooling in the darkroom. To compare, here's a 120 spool, a 620 spool, and a modified 120 spool using sandpaper and about 5 minutes of elbow grease. To load the film, place a fresh roll in the bottom and pull the paper to the top. Remember you need a second spool for the film to lead to. Crank the advance lever a few times to ensure it's on straight. Close and advance until you see the number 1. The ratcheting is going to make it seem like you missed it, but trust me, just wait for the arrows. Shooting is pretty simple. Just hold steady and press the red button on the side. This is a waist level finder and one of the brightest I have ever seen. I had no problems composing my images. Even though you aren't looking through another lens like a true TLR, you are getting nearly 100% of what the viewfinder sees in the final image. When advancing the film, be sure to use full cranks regardless of where the next number falls inside the window. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. When the film is done, crank until the entire roll is wound. If you're unsure, just overdo it. Remember to load and unload in subdued lighting. The flash takes two C batteries and go in facing upward. You can use a coin to open and close the side. 
To load a bulb, just push until you hear a click. When done, just press this button on the back. Remember, the first 10 seconds, you're not going to want to handle it, but after about 30 you should be fine. It doesn't look like it, but this is a sink port if you want to add studio lighting. You can find a household of PC cord on eBay pretty cheap, or at garage sales. I tested the shutter and found that its speed is 1 over 40. Your speed will vary, but if you can't test it, this is a good starting point if you're going to meter your images. Also, this camera has a fixed aperture of f11. The only kind of control I'm going to have is through my ISO and chasing the right kind of light with my handheld meter. Actually, that's not 100% accurate. I can also use these incredibly overpowered flash bulbs that are sometimes over 3 f-stops more powerful than a speed light on full power. To test the Ansco Flex 2, I shot a roll of Kodak Portra and developed using a 3-step at-home C41 kit. I shot half the roll during the day and half at night with 5B flash bulbs. I was pretty happy with the results. Not all of my negatives were perfect though. You can see this weird discoloration, and when I went back to my negatives, I noticed those shots had a strange curve on them, consistent with bent film during exposure. But in this case, it's human error. I was more concerned about getting the number in the center of the window, and didn't realize partial ratcheting would leave the film loose. Other than that, there were no light leaks, and the exposure was consistent with my meter readings. Let's talk about some pros and cons. Starting with the pros. There is an amazing viewfinder, probably the brightest you'll ever see and a favorite among TTV photographers. The design is beautiful and it looks iconic even if you're seeing it for the first time. It's also thoughtful with a guard to block the sun from the viewfinder when you open it and built-in filters. The retro-futuristic design concept of the 1950s and the sturdy metal casing are its highest merits for me. And now for the cons. Having to use a 620 spool or modifying a 120 is a real pain. Respooling is hand cramping and sandpapering plastic is messy. Even though the design is beautiful, it isn't without its flaws. Like a tripod socket that really has no use on a camera with no self timer, no bulb setting, or socket or corded trigger. Plus the strap isn't comfortable and can't be removed, and there's a big red button in a bad spot that opens the back, potentially exposing your film. At the end of the day, this is a great camera to add to any collection. Its simple design means it's probably going to work right off the get-go, and it's really easy to take apart if you want to clean up the viewfinder. This camera's been a part of my permanent collection for years, and I've even used it at a wedding, I've used it in the studio, it's actually kind of fun. In 1956, you could walk into Sears and pick one up with five flash bulbs and two rolls of film for $27.95. The price of one today varies quite a bit. You could pay as little as $15. That's about what I paid for mine. I did see the complete outfit sell for $50 and I honestly wouldn't pay much more than that. No matter what, you shouldn't miss out on one with a flash gun. Uh, you should be able to get a dozen bulbs for about 10 bucks in the box and less if they're loose. That concludes another episode of this old camera. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing. Let me know what camera you think I should review next in the comments down below. Also, be sure and check out my other channel, Mysterious Developments, where I seek out the photographers of lost and abandoned film. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time, stay classic. Everybody loved it. He became a household name after that. He's being played on the radio, and he's got a great video to match. And all of a sudden, boom, there he is everywhere. That was the mainstreaming of, you know, the Marilyn Manson image. Just, it blew up like that. Until next time, stay classic.